Hi, today's video is on atomic structure. In chemistry, we'll often be thinking about the world on a much smaller scale than what we can see with the naked eye. In this section, we're going to learn about atoms and elements and tiny particles that make up the world around us. The two areas that we're going to be looking at are that all, mat all materials consist of atoms and atoms are commonly modelled as existing of electrons orbiting a nucleus and that nucleus contains protons and neutrons. So let's have a look at some revision from Year 10 Science. You would have learnt that all matter is made up of tiny indivisible units called atoms and that they are the building blocks of matter. Atoms are comprised of protons which are positive, neutrons which are neutral and electrons which are negative. Those protons and neutrons are not located in a small dense region in the centre that's called the nucleus, whilst electrons are positioned around the nucleus in energy levels known as electron shells. Here's an example of an atomic structure of oxygen. Oxygen is element number 8 and it has 8 electrons. We have a nucleus and in that nucleus we have protons and neutrons and we have electron shells. You can see here that there appear to be two electron shells, two electrons in the first one and six in the second. We'll go into more detail into that later. Here's a table that shows the subatomic particles that you would have learned about last year. So we have protons, neutrons and electrons with a charge of plus one neutral neutrons and minus one for our electrons. You can see that the mass is comprised of majority protons and neutrons and a negligible 1 over 1840 for an electron. And as we stated, position nucleus for the protons and neutrons and electron shells for our electrons. So next thing we need to look at are elements. Elements are a substance that are made up of just one type of atom. There are about 118 different elements or types of atoms known to exist and you would have seen them represented on a periodic table. I've got a periodic table on the following slide. Elements differ in their number of protons and are represented by a chemical symbol. And it's that number of protons which we can then use to produce this periodic table. So here we have elements that range from hydrogen, helium, lithium, beryllium. You probably had to learn the first 20 off by heart last year. Um, you also possibly learned about the fact that they, they uh, fitted into different groups. So our alkali metals, alkaline earth, basic metals, halogens, noble gases and so on. We'll come back to the periodic table later as well. Here's a little representation of just one of those boxes off of the periodic table. So here we have element H, which is hydrogen, and it has an atomic number, so therefore the number of protons of 1. And it has a relative atomic mass of 1.01. .01. We'll explain later how we get that 1.01, .01, and it's to do with um, isotopes, so that's something we'll look at after. Here's our chemical symbol. So in this case, we could draw our chemical symbol in this form. So the symbol will come here. Your mass number goes at the top as a superscript and your atomic number goes in as a subscript. So the atomic number, remember, is the number of protons in the element and the mass number is the number of protons and neutrons. So if we take the two away, we can work out how many neutrons we have. And of course, in an atom, it's electrically neutral, so our protons and our electrons are equal. Here's an example of what I was talking about before. So we've got our element sodium. Sodium has a symbol of Na. It has a mass number of 23 and an atomic number of 11. We have a second example, bromine. Bromine symbol is Br, atomic number of 35, mass number of 79. Now we talked, touched on before about isotopes. So isotopes are when we have two or more atoms with the same atomic number, so therefore the number of protons, but a different mass number. So we have different number of neutrons. Chemical properties are going to be virtually identical. So they're going to react in the same way. And almost any sample of any element will have some isotopes that exist. Got some examples here of carbon. So we know about carbon 12, 13, and 14. They're isotopes of each other. They're very chemically similar. And what happens is the mass of the three gets added up 
and averaged and so that's how we get a relative atomic mass and so it comes out as a decimal on our periodic table. Here's those examples I was talking about. So we have carbon 12, carbon 13 and carbon 14. You can see that the number of electrons doesn't change, the number of protons doesn't change but the number of neutrons do. So we've got 6, 7 and 8 in this case. Here is our second example, our isotopes of hydrogen that we know about. So here we have hydrogen 1, 2 and 3. And once again you can see that the only difference is the number of neutrons within that, uh, in, within that nucleus. 